Honors Algebra. Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson for the weekend of February the 10th. This one won't be as long as last night's. In fact, this one will be super duper simple. All right. There's a couple things we have to know. But basically, the whole point of today's lesson is combining like terms. That's all we're going to do. Now, I will mention that we already know what a monomial is. All right. We've talked about monomials, and I'm going to draw a little bit more attention to them. This is a monomial. So is this. Okay? Those are different types of monomials. Mono means one. All right? Monomials. We also have things like this, though. 3x squared plus 2. That's not a monomial. No way. Why? Because there's two of them. I'll bet you can figure out that is called a binomial. Right? So you're going to hear Mr. Lawrence using this kind of language. Monomials, you've heard me use. Now you're going to hear me using binomials. This is also a binomial. 8x to the fifth plus 2xy. Binomials, two terms. All right. You guess, I bet you can guess what will happen next. We have things like x squared minus 2x plus 4. Or possibly 3x to the eighth plus 5xy minus 6y to the fourth. I'll bet you can guess these are called trinomials. Trinomials. All right? So we've got monomials, bino binomials, trinomials. After three terms, we don't use any more prefixes other than poly. Polynomials. All right? If the poly just means many. All right? You might have heard of polygons. Many-sided. Polygon is a closed 2D shape having three or more sides. Well, three or more, many. Okay, we have monomials, one term, binomials, two terms, trinomials, three terms, and then after three terms, we go to polynomials. All right, so let's take a look at a problem where we might have to add monomials. Okay, now, there's two things you've got to be careful. This is very, very simple. There's two things you've got to be careful about. One, you've got to make sure you only combine the like terms. Notice in the quantity left, I have a trinomial. There's an x to the fourth, an x squared, and just a constant. In the polynomial on the right, that's a polynomial because there's four terms, there's an x to the sixth, a 2x to the fourth, a 3x, and then a negative 5. The constant is a negative 5. All right, I'm going to be careful. And maybe, maybe if I'm a student at home, I'm going to make sure that I don't make any silly mistakes. Okay, so I might pull out my highlighters. I might circle. I might underline. I'm going to find the highest power, highest power of, of all these monomials. And I see it's this one. Okay, are there any other x to the 6 terms? No, since there's no other x to the 6 terms, I'm going to write him down. I'm not going to do anything with him, just bring him down. Okay, now I'm going to go looking for the next highest power. Oops, I can't seem to, there we go. Okay, and it looks like x to the fourth is my next highest power. But I have two terms that have x to the fourth. And notice when I highlight it, I grab the sign in front of the number. Very easy mistake to make for many kids. So I've got 3x to the fourth in the first quantity, and I've got 2x to the fourth in the second quantity. So altogether, I have 5x to the fourth. Okay, it's just a coincidence that my leading coefficients are the same on both numbers. I don't know why that 5 turned out that way. I must need to orient my board. Hold on one sec. Okay, I've oriented the board, and you can see that looks more like a 5 now. All right. <clears throat> So, let's see here. I'm going to go to my next highest power. It looks like an x squared. And notice I grab the sign in front of the coefficient, and it looks like I only have one term that has an x squared in it, so I'll just bring him down. Okay? I need my next highest power, and that looks like it's a plain old 3x. They are not the same, right? Oh, I don't like that shade of green. 
let me uh, let me change that. It looks too much like oh, that's why. Okay, let me do this. Get rid of that. And here he's in the way. I'll put him over there, and then we'll go here. There we go. Now they look distinctly different. That that is what I was after. All right. So there's only an x to the first term, three x to the first term, and finally. I have my uh, my constants, and I have a positive 4 and a negative 5. Well, that makes a negative 1, and there you go. I just combined like terms. I added my monomials together. <coughs> All right. Let's look at one that looks a little bit stranger, but it's actually just as easy. Let's have the quantity of 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. And we're going to subtract the quantity of 4x squared minus 5x uh, plus 3. Okay. Now, some of you are going to do this wrong because you're going to steamroll through this and you're not going to pay attention. All right. This negative right here, this negative. Oops, that's not highlighter mode. Hold on one second. This negative right here is extremely important. Who does he belong to? He, he doesn't belong to just the, the 4x squared. He belongs to this entire quantity. So what we need to do is we need to distribute this negative. This negative has to apply to this term, this term, and this term. Here's how I like to do it. I like to change this to a plus and then change all three signs inside. What I'm really doing is I'm multiplying by a negative one. That's really like a negative one quantity in front of, in front of the quantity, excuse me, a negative one in front of the quantity. Distributing the negative changes the sign of everything within the quantity. Now I'm ready to go ahead and do my highlighting and combine the like terms. So I've got a positive 6x squared here and I've got a negative 4x squared. Now, before you get hung up on this, this is so simple. Please don't make this hard. Just read it. Read the two highlighted terms. 6x squared minus 4x squared. I'm sure your brain is going, oh, of course, it's 2x squared. Okay. I'll go to my next set. Let's see here. Let's get a different color out. No, yellow's not going to work. Ooh, that's an ugly color. Let's try that. I have a positive 2x and a positive 5x. Well, that must be 2x plus 5x. That must be 7x. Okay, and then finally, I'm not going to highlight this one. I'll circle in green. I've got a negative 4 and a negative 3. If somebody's going, Mr. Lawrence, it's a plus negative. It doesn't matter. It's still a negative 3. If I owe $4 and I owe 3 more dollars, I must owe $7. And that is how easy it is. This stuff is cake, ladies and gentlemen. You can do it. You just got to pay attention to the negatives. All right. Uh, one thing I do want to review with you really quick is uh, perimeter. Okay. Let's say that this rectangle was 3x plus 4 centimeters wide, and it was 7x plus two centimeters long, all right? Could you figure out the perimeter of this rectangle? Now look, I don't have a lot of time to teach you geometry. This should be simple, but I'll review it because I know you guys are a little bit rusty. Some of you, not all of you, all right? All perimeter is, perimeter is a distance around a polygon. It's the distance around a polygon. So I'm gonna take a walk around this rectangle and I'm gonna walk here how far did I walk? Well, I walked 7x plus 2 centimeters, right? Okay. And then when I walked this way, I walked 3x plus 4 centimeters. Then when I walk this way, it's another 7x plus 2 centimeters. And then finally, when I come this way, I've gone all the way around. It's another 3x plus 4 centimeters. Okay. Now, I'm just going to add up what I have. Well, that's 6, and that's 6, so I must have 12. Here I have 10 x's. Here I have 10 x's, so I must have 20 x plus 12 centimeters. That 
is the perimeter of that polygon. Should be simple. All right, Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a great weekend, everybody.